Welcome back to Ancient Egyptian Object Stories. In this episode, we will be examining a beautiful statuette of Queen Ankhnes Mary Ray and her son, King Pepi II. In the last episode, we learned that Egyptologists separate ancient Egyptian chronology into different periods. The object presented in this video dates to the Old Kingdom in the 6th dynasty. Dynasties are defined typically by royal family groups that ruled Egypt for a period of time before the rule transferred, to, for various reasons, to another family group. Sometimes a dynasty is assigned to a different cultural group that ruled Egypt at some time or another, such as the Hyksos people of the 15th dynasty. We will learn more about these dynasties as they come up. This statuette currently on display in the Brooklyn Museum in New York City dates to the end of the Old Kingdom during the reign of Pepi II, who reigned circa 2278-2184 BC. He was the last king of the 6th dynasty and apparently ruled for 94 years, meaning that he was still a child when he became king. The statue stands at 39 centimeters tall and 25 centimeters wide. It is made of a stone called Egyptian alabaster, or more scientifically, travertine. This is an opaque and translucent creamy white stone, sometimes with bands of yellow or brown, that was quarried from the eastern desert and other wadis in Egypt. This is an ornamental stone that was used to make a variety of objects, namely cosmetic vessels like coal pots, and elaborate cosmetic spoons like this girl holding a vessel in the shape of an antelope. Another example is this travertine headrest. Other objects that were made from Egyptian alabaster were storage vessels, bowls and plates, and canopic jars. This stone was even used in large-scale building projects such as pavement or architraves in temples, as well as altars and shrines. The statue presented in this object story depicts the Queen Mother Ankhnes Mary Ray and her son, King Pepi II, who is seated perpendicularly on her lap. She wears a very slim-fitting sheath dress, which is characteristic of women in Egyptian art. She also wears this so-called tripartite wig, which is a wig that is represented in three sections. Some locks flow over both of her shoulders, while the rest of the wig flows down her back. Her natural hairline is visible under the wig. Very delicately carved on top of her wig is a crown in the shape of a vulture. The head of the vulture, which would have been inserted into the now empty hole at the top of her forehead, is now lost. The wings and tail of the vulture are, however, visible. In each of its claws, it carries the Shen sign, which is a symbol for eternity and also protection. This headdress, which is common regalia for queens in ancient Egypt, represents the vulture goddess Nechbet, who was associated with Upper Egypt. In art, she is often found hovering over the pharaoh as his protector, and the shen ring that she bears indicates that she offers the king everlasting protection. Queens and queen mothers were also symbolically charged with this attribute, which is emphasized in the statue of Ankhnes Mary Ray. She supports the king with one hand on his back and the other on his knees, and of course, she supports him bodily on her lap. Isis was the mother of the sun god Horus, of whom kings were believed to be manifestations, and therefore Egyptian queens were associated with that goddess as well. Ankhnes Mary Ray's manifestation as Isis may be represented by the shape of the statue, which is arguably the shape of the throne hieroglyph, the hieroglyph that symbolizes Isis and which is used in the spelling of her name. Cleverly three-dimensionalized hieroglyphs were not uncommon in ancient Egyptian art, as this other statue of Pepi I shows. The frontal view shows an enthroned king bearing the traditional royal insignia and costume, while Horus in his manifestation of a falcon hovers behind him. But viewed from the back, the statue becomes a three-dimensional serek, which was a format of writing the king's first name, the Horus name. Egyptian kings generally had five names, but Egyptologists most often refer to pharaohs by their birth names, which was their fifth name in the order of their royal titulary. In the statue of Ankhnes Mary Ray, Pepi II is depicted on a diminutive scale, but no less a king, revealed by his nemes headdress and shendit kilt. 
The nemes was a striped cloth headdress that is characterized by two lappets in front and gathered together in the back. Though the focus of the statue is on the symbolic connection between king and mother, the reason for his tiny size may also be due to the fact that he came to the throne at the tender age of six years old. His youth is emphasized in an autobiographical text in the tomb of one of his officials named Harkuf. Harkuf's tomb is located in the far south of Egypt in modern-day Aswan. Anciently, the site was called Abu, which means elephant in ancient Egyptian, and the Greek name, which is generally how Egyptologists refer to the ancient site, is Elephantine. This is because it was a gateway for ivory trade from Nubia, modern-day Sudan. The text in Harkuf's tomb elaborates the details of his journey deep into Nubian lands during the second year of Pepi II's reign, when the king was just eight years old. Harkuf ventured south multiple times, possibly departing from Elephantine, on a mission to acquire luxury goods for the king. One particular mission was to an area anciently known as Iyam, the location of which has been debated by Egyptologists. But it is generally agreed that Yam was somewhere in southern Nubia, perhaps as far as a little north of Khartoum, Sudan's capital. The purpose of his journey to Yam was to find and bring back to Egypt a pygmy, whom Pepi II was extremely excited to see. Pepi II's letter to Harkuf on the subject is reproduced in Harkuf's tomb. Come north to the residence at once. Hurry and bring with you this pygmy whom you brought from the land of the horizon dwellers, live, hale, and healthy, for the dances of the god to gladden the heart, to delight the heart of King Pepi II, who lives forever. When he goes down with you into the ship, get worthy men to be around him on deck, lest he fall into the water. When he lies down at night, get worthy men to lie around him in his tent. Inspect ten times at night. My majesty desires to see this pygmy, more than the gifts of the mine land and of Punt. The text does not confirm whether Harkuf managed to bring the pygmy to Memphis, where the king's residence was located. At the end of his unusually long reign, Pepi II was interred in his pyramid complex at South Saqqara, just south of the stepped pyramid of King Djoser of the Third Dynasty. Unfortunately, the pyramid does not survive well. Its interior was decorated with ceilings of stars and spells from the pyramid texts and his granite sarcophagus. Thank you for watching, and I hope you will join me again for my next ancient Egyptian object story. For further reading, please see the description box below.